Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, as Pastor Tom mentioned at the beginning of our time together today, uh, we are closing out our stewardship series called Connecting and Committed. And I hope that as we've gone through this series, you've kind of seen this progression that's gone through it. As we even started a couple of weeks ago with that first point of what a life with God looks like, what our relationship with Him looks like. Namely, that we can go to Him first above all things before anything else in our lives. But also that in that relationship with God, it changes how we see things. It changed, if you remember back to last week, how we view our treasures, that they're no longer just things that we hold on to or things we accumulate, but rather things we can use to help other people know who Jesus is. And you know, we're going to see that again here as we take a look at the last point, to a life with others, what that life with others looks like, what that relationship looks like, that it's not going to stay the same, that, that God's relationship with us changes us. It changes how we think. It changes how we act. It, it changes how we see other people. It even changes who we are. It doesn't leave us where we are. I don't know if you caught that in the gospel text, but what does Jesus tell his disciples and us? You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. That's identity language. He's not saying you might be, or could be, or should be. This is who you are because of God's relationship with you. You are made salt. You are made light. But you know, Jesus isn't playing the name game when it comes to the identity that he's given to us. You know, much like in our lives where people give us various titles to make us feel a little better or more important, right? That's not what's happening here. Instead, this title comes with things for us to do. Consider the gospel text again. Look to the screen. Jesus says, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So yes, you are salt and light, but you are also salt and light that is able to make an impact in the world around you, to to make a difference in the lives of people around you. As light, you have that ability to shine brightly, to to not hide it under a basket, but to do something that helps people see the, the light that shines through you. As salt, you have that opportunity and ability to flavor the living daylights out of the world around you and the people around you, so much so that they want to take the train to Flavortown. And yes, somehow we worked a Guy Fieri quote into a stewardship sermon, okay? It won't be the last one today. There's at least one more to come, all right? You can look for that later. But this is the truth of the matter. Yes, we are salt and light, It's who we are, but it's also what we do as we make an impact, as we make a difference in the lives of people around us. And really what that means for us is that we need to spend time with them and build relationships with them. And this is kind of a a low-key but important point in our gospel text. You know, yes, we are salt and light because of God's relationship with us, but being salt and light, can we do that on our own or do we need others? Let's look again to the gospel text to see if we can be salt and light by ourselves or if other people are needed. Look to the screen. It says, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. The city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. And it gives light to all in the house. 
In the same way, let your light shine before others, so they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So who is this for? Is this for us so that we know we're salty and and bright? Or is it for others? So that they may know a, a different taste rather than the bland, monotonous taste they've experienced on this side of eternity. Is it for others? So that they may have a, a, a glimmer of light that shines in the midst of their ever-present darkness. It's for others. Isn't it? It's for others. And what that tells us is in order to be salt and light, we need to be in the places where those people are. In the places that don't always taste the best. And even in the places that are dimly lit. And I get that that goes against the the thinking of our time. I mean, think about how many times do you go back to places that don't taste good? Right? Do you ever go back to a restaurant because the, the, the food was terrible? Absolutely not. Even if your friend suggested to you, you're like, you know what? Bad experience there once. Taste wasn't good. Let's not go back. And even dimly lit places, how many times do we go to those? How many times have we been warned not to go to those because those places are often seen as, as dangerous and not safe, and so we avoid them at all costs. But dear friends, the truth of the matter is, the people of this world... They are in those places. Places where they experience the bland and monotonous taste that comes from sin and brokenness in their lives to the point where they think that's all it is. That's all that is offered in this world. That's everything and how it tastes. People who are experiencing that ever-present darkness in their life to the point where they're not sure what the next step might be, where to go, how to take that next step, what the direction might be. This is where they are. It's where your neighbors are. It's where your coworkers are. It's where your friends are. It's where your kids are. Your grandkids. It's where your sisters and your, and your brothers are. It's where your families are. Dear friends, these are the places we go. Because these are the places where they are. And I know there's those hesitations that we talked about. We don't like to go to places that don't taste good or are dimly lit. But I know one of the biggest hesitations that we have in going to those places is that we don't feel qualified. We don't feel like we're experienced enough to go into those places, to to bring salt, to bring light, to be salt and light in those places, in those times, for those people. But the truth of the matter is, there is no one more qualified than you to go into those places because it's in those exact places where your God in Christ has found you. Because how many times have we dined on the monotonous, bland tastes of our sin and brokenness, thinking that this is all there is, that this is all we'll ever be able to see, experience, taste in our lives, that this is just the way it's supposed to be? How many times have we wandered around in the darkness, wondering where to go, stumbling over our own feet because we can't see what's coming next or even what's in front of us? How many times Have we found ourselves in these places? And yet, how many times has our God in Christ come to find us there? The answer? Over and over and over again. Each and every time. Bringing us back to himself. Bringing his salt, his light, into our blandness and in our dimly lit spaces, bringing his hope, his love, his forgiveness, his mercy, so that we could taste something different, so that we could see something different 
in our lives. Dear friends, he brings everything we need. Not just to be brought from those places, but to also be made salt and light for others in their lives. And because that's true, because he gives us everything we need to be that salt and light, what it means is that we're not just qualified. It means that we're called to go into those places, to spend time and build relationships with those people, whoever they are, wherever they might be. And honestly, one of the hardest things about being salt and light in those times and places is just getting started. I mean, how do you be salt? How do you become light right in those times? What does that look like? What does that mean? Do you just walk up to somebody one day and say, have you met Jesus? Right? Maybe you buy a Bible, you gift wrap it, you put it in their mailbox, and you put it in there, and you, you ring the doorbell and run back to your car or your house, right? These are jokes, guys. Please do not do this, okay? This is, these are not good examples. Let's not, let's not do these things, okay? Instead, what we can do, what it looks like, is found in Galatians 5. Look to the screen. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's what it looks like to be salt and light. If there's an opportunity for love, show it. If there's an opportunity for kindness, be kind. If there's an opportunity for joy, peace, patience, whatever it may be, do it. And help them taste something different. Help them see something different because this is what it means to be salt and light in this world. Because all of those things stand out immensely compared to what the rest of the world is and what the rest of the world offers. And you know, if you're looking for a place, if you're looking for someone to to brighten up their day, to to put them on the train to Flavortown, that's the second one, okay? That's the last one for the rest of the sermon, I promise. You can start here at at Beautiful Savior. Next year, early next year during Lent, we're going to be starting our small group focus and emphasis. Come join us. Come see what a a relationship with others can be, what it can look like in this place for this time. Become part of our youth group. Become a a mentor for Beautiful Savior Kids, our children's ministry, our, our Child Development Center. There's so many ways that you can engage, so many ways you can connect into a life with others. And we encourage you to come join us and be a part of that here and even out there. Because whether it's here or out there, there is one fundamental need we all have. We all need Jesus. We all need Jesus. Continuing to connect with him and his love, continuing to remain committed followers of him as our God. And so God's blessings to you as you engage here and out there. God's blessings to you as God continues to to make you salt and light, but also makes you to, to be salt and light in the places where you go, in the people you have in your life. God's blessings to you as you give them something different to taste, something that they can actually use to see. Jesus Christ, our Savior, their Savior, and Lord. Amen. Amen.